Lads, hi. I'm the Moorlander and this is Moorlander EDC. Now in the Northern Hemisphere, this is the best time of the year, mainly because I like it when it's cold, but it's also dark quite a lot, which makes it the perfect time of year to be testing out flashlights, which I'm sure you've probably noticed we've had quite a few recently, which has been great. Um, if you're a flashaholic, then it's a great time to be messing with lights in the dark. Um, well, what we have today to look at is the P23i. I don't know why my brain keeps wanting to say PD23i. So if at any point during this I say PD23i, then just ignore me. It is the P23i from Nightcore. Um, so this is a tactical flashlight, but it's a bit of a crossover. I, I don't know if there is a crossover kind of section in the uh, uh, Flashlight Hall of Fame, if there is a Flashlight Hall of Fame. Um, but I think this spans both of them, mainly because it's very simple to be able to change it from an EDC with EDC functions style flashlight over to a tactical flashlight that just does it in a very tactical kind of way. So I guess, the I mean there must be, because I know that there's other tactical style flashlights out there that, that have this ability to be able to switch between the two. So Nightcore got in touch just before Christmas and asked if I'd like to test this. Um, had a few family issues through Christmas, uh, which is why you know, it's, it's took me a little bit longer to get to this, but I'd certainly like to say thank you to Nightcore for sending this out to me. Um, and. Yeah, okay, so as I usually do, let's turn the camera around. I forgot what I was gonna say then for a second. I felt like I was gonna say something else, but I forgot what I was gonna say. I was probably just gonna say thank you, you know, I really appreciate it. Whenever I'm contacted by companies for them to send me products to review. I say this all the time, but I really do mean it. It's it's, a, it's an incredibly humbling kind of thing that they'd, that they'd like to send one of their products to me. Um, that was probably what I was gonna say. Um, but for now, let's turn the camera around and take a closer look at the P23i. So before we get into the flashlight, here's a quick look at the box for the Nightcore P23i. Uh, 3,000 lumens up to 4,000, 4, sorry, 470 meters. Uh, it's charged via a, uh, well, at least it uses a 21700 battery in there, some extra information here on the side as far as Candela. Um, uh, the modes, this is, it has two, uh, two buttons on the, on the tail function again, you know, which we will have a look at and then what is included inside the box. Now, as far as what is included, you get the kind of the standard things that you'd expect. So you have one of these really nice night core, um, USB type C uh, cables, which actually, do you know what? I, I've got a, quite a few of these now and I've started to use these a little bit more and I've started to put these in more bags compared to some of the more expensive ones that you can buy off Amazon. These are actually really nice. Not very long, but I, I think they don't need to be long because it's a flashlight, but actually really good quality, um, good quality cables. You get all some of the extras that you'd expect in here as well. So there is a clip. Generally, I, I don't tend to put the clips on them. Uh, you get a lanyard and there are some extra rubber gaskets as well. And then last but not least, uh, you get a sheath with it as well. So that will fit in. It goes down tail end first and then pops over. Um, this is one of those ones that can be used in one of two ways. So you can pass it through a belt should you want to, um, or if you want to put it maybe onto a bag as well, then you can pass that through. And then if there is PALS webbing on there, you can do that as well. Also comes uh, with a little D-ring there as well. So let's take that out and have a look. Actually, so another thing that does come inside the box, which I'm just gonna change some of the ways that we do, or at least I try and do some of this. So quickly, you can see on the instructions here, it comes as far as the length is concerned. It's uh, five, roughly five and a half inches by uh, an inch and a quarter in diameter, which is, which is the head comes down to about an inch here. Um, and then as far as all of the different settings are concerned, which we will have a look at, but I'm just gonna hold this here quickly. There is, uh, so th there's actually, so there's 
five different light modes and then there is a, a there is a special mode which is your strobe you've got low which is 50 lumens uh, sorry ultra low is 50 lumens low 250 mid 800 high 1500 hopefully if you can see this and then turbo is 3000 the run times for each of these ultra low is for 45 hours low is is 10 hours I can't even read it off this sheet mid is four hours high is two and a half hours and turbo um, is 30 minutes now there is a, a little caveat with that and that is that it will kick down and it depends on the temperature of the light itself but just some extra details as well. Now I did mention as far as the throw was concerned on this one, it, it's up to 470 meters. So it's, it's actually got a reasonably high candela. It's a 40, uh, sorry, I can't even read it. It's 55,300 candela on its turbo mode. So you do get a good distance out of this. Now I'm just gonna put that down there because you don't really wanna focus. Anyone can just go onto the manufacturing website and you know, you can you can perfectly read through uh, three, read through the instructions if if you choose to. Let's actually get into, into the light itself. So it's constructed as it an all metal aluminum construction, has this really nice smooth, um, anodized to it because it is quite smooth um, there is plenty of knurling around this you can see here uh, some of this will help to uh, reduce some of the heat especially here around the head all of these little uh, parts here are help to reduce some of the heat um, but it, it just get, make sure that you've got a nice good grip on it because with the anodized it, it does make it a little bit slippy um, if you're wearing gloves uh, or if, if your hands if, if your hands are wet um, as I mentioned here at the top, it, the, the head, as you can see, is a, is a little bit wider. Uh, you, I guess you can probably take this off if, if, you, if you turn it hard enough, uh, but mainly if you need to get into the internals, you unscrew the tail end here and you'll be able to get into the internals. Now the, this is powered by a 21700 um, 5000 milliamp hour battery. These are one of the Nightcore ones. I don't believe that these are proprietary ones. I probably should have tested this before I got out. What I'll do is when I get home, I'll test it and I'll just put down here um, if, other, if, if other batteries will work in here. Uh, but it goes in. Something that I always test as far as, um, maybe I, it's just down to tolerances, but yeah, the, to the tolerance on these screws are really nice. That's been maybe a full turn. Um, yeah, it's it's nice, it's nice and tight on there. You do. It is also greased as well. I don't know if you can quite see that. Oh, sorry, we've just gone out of focus there for a second. Sorry about that. Uh, but it's greased on here as well, just to make sure it stops any uh, water or debris. Uh, but also just to make sure it's, it uh, it goes on there. Uh, is there. And when you can see when the battery is connected, there is a little blue LED there as well. Now that LED also serves as a function to be able to tell you um, when it's charging, how it's charging whether it's charged completely but also dependent on the um on the it as a, as a power indicator as well so when it's reached certain settings or at least certain levels of power within the battery or electricity that's left within the battery um, you will get some signals from this to give you a rough idea of what's left Towards the end, oh actually while, while we're talking about charging, I know I did mention it uh, as far as you get a cable, but this is powered by a USB Type-C uh, port on here, which is great. It's nice to see that more companies are adopting these as, you know, within the next two or three years, the, these are going to be everywhere. Um, so. I have tested this as well now hopefully you'll be able to see if I if I start to re rotate this ever so slightly you'll see that it's quite a deep recess within here to be able to get to that now I have checked this with several other different um, different USB type C cables I certainly haven't found one yet that the plastic coating around it now if I get that cable back where did I put it Oh, it's here. Sorry about that. It's in a bush. So if you notice, if I bring this back out, what you'll often get is with some of these, 
So the actual cable itself or the, uh, the, the male end to this will fit in no matter what. But sometimes the plastic bit that goes around here, it, it can vary in how wide it is and, and how deep it is. Um, and having tested a few different, or at least all of the ones that I can find, certainly haven't had any struggle being able to get it within this recess to be able to charge it. The plastic bung, the rubber bung that goes in there, it's pretty bomber. Now I will say over the last maybe decade or so, this is one of the areas that I think some manufacturers, not necessarily gone wrong, but I think they've just not done it to the degree that just makes you feel 100% safe that when you're out and about and this gets wet, that nothing is gonna get in there. So when this is in there, you push it in, and yeah, believe me, it is in there nice and tight. It's gonna stop anything from getting in there. Um, it's, it's a trend that I've seen, and it's a trend that I appreciate. Getting towards the end of the light, hopefully you'll be able to look in there and you will be able to see um, the, uh, the LED unit in there. It's nice and bright, or at least it's nice and easy to see. Obviously it's not on at this moment in time. And then we've got this really nice smooth reflector that helps to throw when it's on the turbo up to those 470, uh, 470 meters, I nearly said lumens then. Around the edge, we have a fairly typical style tactical bezel, uh, and there are some additional breaking points on here should this needed need to be used to uh, to shatter some glass. Um, if you're in the forces, or maybe if you're um, not the forces, I'm, I meant to say emergency services, sorry. Uh, you need to gain access to a vehicle or a property to help somebody that's in there. Um, this will do a very good job at being able to do that. Do you know what I might make? Maybe that's a piece of content for the future. Let's have a look at some of the tactical lights that I've got. And I'll go and buy a couple of old car doors and just see how easy it is. Um, I mean, that would be a lot of fun, wouldn't it? Anyway, so let's, let, let's, get, let's get back to the light. All of the functions for the light are all done down here at the tail end. You have two buttons. There is a slightly recessed uh, one here that just fits into the tail cap that you can depress. And there is the larger main button here at the top. Either side, if I start to rotate that there, you'll be able to see that we also have some protectors. Mainly they are so that if it is dropped, it will stop it. Now it was uneven ground there, which is because I've just happened to land it on that route there, but it will it will stop a lot of the impact from, from making any sort of damage to the internals here. And happy to say as well that the button sits ever so slightly below, maybe half a millimeter. However, it's enough that should you want to put this down uh, on a flat surface, you can tail stand this, which is great. There are some other similar lights out there that the, that the, 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 the rubber of the tail switch pokes out just enough that you can't do that. Now, there aren't any magnets in here, so you're not gonna be able to uh, magnetize this and put it onto something, which makes sense because really, you know, you really do have a small area for the connection there for, for that to be able to uh, to be able to magnetize on. Now I've kind of uh, cheated a little bit so uh, it's a simple click for on, click for off um, and you can do a half press to be able to access like a like a, a a quick function on there. And it's the same with this additional button. Now this additional button here, it does say mode on it. Now when it's turned off like this, if you depress that, uh, Nightcore call this strobe ready. So whether you're in the, the, the tactical mode or whether you're in the everyday EDC mode, which is the one that it's in at this moment in time, um, whatever mode that you're in, you can press this and it will get you straight onto the strobe mode. So just in case you were concerned, maybe you like to prefer to keep it in the everyday mode, but you did want something to to blind somebody if, if, if needed, um, then you always get access to that. If the camera's picking this up, hopefully you'll be able to see that it's a variable refresh on there as well, which really, really doesn't take long before it starts to give you a bit of a headache, which I guess is really why it's there. Now when it's on, so you turn it on, 
uh, and that turns it on. Uh, there is a memory in here as well, so whatever mode you had it on last, it will always make sure that, that it returns to that mode. You then use the mode button, so this is the, 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 the strobe ready button. Whilst, you're, uh, whilst it's on with the main button, this will then cycle you through each of the other modes. So here we have the ultra low, then we have low, then we have medium, and then we have high. Then if you press it again, it will then take you back down to ultra low, low, medium, and high. Now at this point, if you do want to get access to the turbo mode, you hold down the mode button again, which will give you the access to the full 3000 lumens. Slightly different to the way some other manufacturers do it. A lot of others will have it so that you've got maybe say low, medium, high, and turbo. But really what it means is it just it's just the extra click to get to that should you need it. At high, it comes in at 15,000, sorry, 1,500 lumens, which I think is a very good luminosity level for it to be in at high. Should you have it still on high, so we're on high now, if you were to shine this into somebody's eyes, it is going to startle them, it is going to blind them. Certainly when we'll have a look at in the dark later, you'll be able to see that it's a very good light level. Um, but should you need to, then yes, you click on the tail, or click on the mode button, keep that depressed, and it will bump it up onto the turbo mode. Now I did mention there was also a tactical mode, so when it's in everyday mode you get all of those different options. So you have uh, ultra low, low, medium, high and then turbo should you need it uh, you, where you can press the light. But it will always cycle through whatever was the last mode that you had it on. So at the moment I had, have it on low, keep, turn it back on, turn it back off again and it will always remain on low. Whereas if you have it on the tactical mode no matter which mode you finished on as such, if you turn it off, turn it back on again, it will always come back on the high, uh, uh, sorry, on the turbo mode rather than high. To turn it between the different settings, the mode button here, all you have to do, uh, and the tail cap, so, so at this moment in time, this is tight or it is closed. It, it certainly won't turn any further. If I press down on the mode button and, and turn the tail cap slightly, you'll see that, that you will get, it will have a double flash. The double flash means that it is in the second mode, which is a tactical mode. So if I hold it like that and then turn it, one, two, see that it just flashed. Close the tail cap and it's now in turbo mode. So when I press uh, on, the, uh, on, on the switch button, it automatically kicks it in to turbo no matter what. The mode button still um, changes through the different modes, but with this one, it misses out the high. So what you've got is turbo, medium, low, and ultra low, mainly because, well, really what you want is turbo if you're in this tactical mode. Turn it back off again, we left it in, in ultra low there, but when I turn it back on again, you'll see that it always comes on to high mode. Um, the, the strobe mode is exactly the same, no matter what. When it's turned off, if you hit the strobe, it will always come on on the strobe mode. Now to change it back again, so at this moment in time, we, it had that double flash, didn't it? So when I do it this time, you'll notice instead, it will just have a single flash because that's putting it back into mode one, which is the consumer mode, the everyday mode, the EDC mode. So I'll keep my finger down on the mode button, open the tail cap, you see it just flashed once then, close the tail cap and we're now back into the EDC mode. Now, if you can remember, please feel free to rewind this uh, video uh, just to double check that, but it's now come on to the low mode, which was the one that it was on before that it remembered. And same again, I can hit the mode button and then I can then cycle through all of the modes. Here I'm on low, keep my finger on it and it will bump that up uh, to the turbo mode. Whilst it's on as well, if you do want to have access to uh, the strobe whilst it's on rather than turning it off and then putting it onto strobe mode, you can do a triple click and it will turn that onto the strobe mode as well. I quite like the UI on this. It's definitely different. 
I think compared to some other lights, especially when you compare the fact that they have the they have the main button and they have the mode button, I like the fact that they've decided to make sure that the turbo turbo is almost an extra function on this, especially when you're when you're in the normal mode. So no matter what mode you're on, whether you're in the the low mode or you're on the sorry the the ultra low or the low mode like it is here, if you want to get access to the turbo, just that extra press will be able to give you that. I certainly like how they've how they've changed that. Now, before looking at it in the dark, what I thought was, let's just have a look at some other similar lights. So we've got some other similar lights. Um, just to just to show these two here first, we have got from uh, Chloris. This is the uh, the XT twenty one C, and from Phoenix, this is the TK sixteen. All very similar lights. All have that kind of tactical bezel on there. Um, the, the the Phoenix and the Night Call have a, a, a smooth reflector, whereas the Chlorus has a, a, has a, 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 a an orange peel reflector in there. But they all have similar function here on the end. The Chlorus does have the ability to be able to switch between a uh, an everyday mode and a tactical mode, whereas the Phoenix just keeps everything in it in its real kind of tactical mode. Um, there's more of a, a, a metal button on here but they all have with this secondary function be able to put it directly through to, to a strobe and then they all have the ability to be able to turn on uh, and then you'll pass through the different modes with that second function. These two lights are a little bit brighter so these two go up to around 4000 lumens. This is 3000 lumens but at the end of the day I think when you're getting to that brightness especially if you're using this tactically and you're shining it in somebody's eyes to, to, uh, to, to startle them I think the difference between 4,000 and 3,000 is quite negligible. Here we've got the um, we've got the the Army Tech Doberman Pro. Now, uh, sorry, I will, will mention that all of these lights, these are all 21700. Uh, sorry, yeah, 21700, 27100. Uh, what am I saying? Anyway, these all use the same battery. The Doberman, uh, the Doberman Pro here from Army Tech, this uses an 18650 battery. Um, this comes in at 1400 lumens, whereas this is, I mean, I suppose on your everyday mode goes up to 1500. Um, but you get the advantage with this one that you can you can give it that extra bump up to turbo should you need to. Uh, the difference with this one is that you've just got that single tail button on the end, and if you want to change between the functions, you do that little twist on the head to be able to. Uh, to be able to do those but for now I think I've rambled quite a bit there let's have a look at this in the dark okay now the Sun is set and we're back out with the night call p23i uh, so I'll go through the modes on here now as it stands what I'll do is I'll go through these in the, the EDC mode mainly because with the EDC mode you get the ultra low low medium high and turbo Whereas as previously mentioned in the tactical mode, um, it goes from turbo down to um, down to medium, then low, then ultra low. It misses out that high setting. So at this moment in time, we are on the ultra low, which is actually, do you know, rather than you see in certain lights where ultra low is maybe one lumen, half a lumen, you're definitely getting more than that here. So. If it was something that I'd possibly change, although it's nice to have the ultra low at this level, I think it'd be great if it was half that or even drop it down to one lumen. I think for ultra low being this light, it's almost a little bit too light, which seems seems daft almost saying this, but this tree here, I've just paced this out, that is roughly five meters away. And then the tree behind it there uh, is roughly 10 meters away but you can still see off into the trees in the distance as well there uh, and then you can see you can see a little bit further down so using the using the mode button on this with a single press this then takes it up into the low mode which really does help you to see even further down that tree you know it is really lit up the one behind it, it's even more lit up and now we can start to see where's the tree that I had uh, so you've got this tree and then there's one in between them and then there's one a little bit further down so that's roughly 15 meters and then the one further down there where you can see that little clump uh, they're roughly about 20 meters away 
but even then on the low mode being able to use this you can see it's still a reasonably good thrower with the high candela on this what you can also actually if i start to hold this out you can see that it's got a really nice little warm spot there and then you have a very defined spill around that the warm spot or at least the the, the hot spot within that area as well um, is really well defined too so that's the low setting i press it again this then bumps us up to medium so the trees that are over there that are about 20 meters away you can start to see them with a lot more ease now you know this tree that's that's here on the ground I have to say as well that the the light that this produces as well so this is um this is the white light again you know it's very crystal clear um the quality of the light that it produces um certainly means that being able to see which you might struggle to see um as i'm looking at this through the camera but the quality of the light uh, and, and my ability to be able to pick up the detail on these trees that are close and then even the, the, the trees that are a little bit further away is is very good uh, here i think did we just bump up to the medium mode yes i think we're on the medium mode but the throw through the trees here is you know it, 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 it's 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 incredibly good let's put it that way bump it up again and this then takes us into the high mode which was 1500 lumens uh, and you can see so rather than looking down there now we can look out into the distance the trees that we're looking at here are easily 80 to 90 meters away um, and you can certainly see further into the trees that way if I did turn around here again you know those trees that we're looking at in the distance there very easy to see as I mentioned so there isn't really a click to keep it on turbo mode if you want to go on turbo mode you have to hold down uh, the mode button and then this will take us up into turbo and that pretty much doubles the amount of output that you get from this and again you know looking into those trees um, you can see how much I think that's really that's that's the money shot there really if this comes off properly being able to see into those trees and being able to see the branches on there it's only about 100 meters away but for me being able to look at, up at the canopy being able to look down at the trees and the individual branches there um, you certainly do get um, I mean, like I say, so there's quite a good throw on this, mainly due to the high candela and the reflector that's in there. But again, just sweeping this round through the trees, um, you can really see the quality of the light that comes out of this as well. Now, I guess the last little thing to show, I suppose I can turn this off and here is, uh, here is the strobe mode. It's a variable refresh on the strobe. Uh, when you've got this on after a while, it will definitely give you a headache. Uh, but as far as strobes go, uh, as mentioned, so using while it's off, using the uh, using the mode button will make sure that it is always strobe ready should you need it, whether you're on the EDC mode or whether you're in the tactical mode as well. Hopefully you might have noticed that there has just been a kick down there. The main reason for that kick down is because of the internal circuitry that is in this to help to manage that heat. Because I've been going through a lot of these cycles now. Um, it has got hot, um, but it will always make sure rather than on certain settings, rather than it being a certain time period before it reduces, um, reduces the kick down, it will make sure that it will do it when it reaches a certain temperature, which is great to see because it makes sure that it, it keeps everything nice and safe. Now the P23i is in good company. And it's in a very competitive space in the tactical, everyday flashlight kind of arena. There's some very good lights out there that are its equal or kind of peer in the, uh, in the marketplace. I think it does a very good job at equaling them. And I think, I think that's the best thing to say. There's, what it really does is, is it gives you the choice that's out there dependent on whether maybe, you know, you just prefer Nightcore lights. Maybe you've always gone with Nightcore and you're after something similar and you just think, ah, do you know what, ah, that, that Phoenix Night light is a very good light, but I've always gone with Nightcore. I think what it does is, is it just makes sure that there's a lot more choice out there. What it does, it does very good. I'm certainly not putting this down compared to other lights. I think it certainly competes 
at an equal level to a lot of those already good lights to show that this is also another good light available on the market and just yeah as I say really just gives you that extra choice would I recommend it I certainly would recommend it I think it's very good for that as I've said before I think as far as a 1500 lumen light it's a very good 1500 lumen light and the fact that you've just got that extra button that you hold press down to give it that turbo function I think it's actually a better option when you're in the EDC kind of mode for this than some of the lights where you've got to cycle through and then maybe you hit turbo by accident and accidentally blind yourself. 1500 lumens is is perfectly serviceable for the vast majority of people out there and I certainly commend them for taking that choice to have the turbo as that extra click when you're clicking down on the on, on the function button on here. Um, so yeah, really impressed with this. I'd like to say thank you again to Nightcore for sending this my way and I certainly look forward to having a look at some of your products again in the future. Um, I will leave all of Nightcore's links or where you can find more about the P23i. I think I've only got away with saying PD23i a few times and I nearly said it then. But um, I will leave all of the links so that you can see more from the P23i uh, below here and some of my links as well. Uh, but for now, stay safe, stay Moorlander and stay EDC. Moorlander instincts kicking in. Something in the bushes over there, it's probably just a rabbit. It might just, it might even be a squirrel, I don't know. I'm hoping it's going to come out, but I'm talking. It can probably smell me. It won't come this way. Nearly did it again. Why have I got P PD? What are the? I'm just trying to think. What are the, there must be there must be a similar light that's called the PD. PD is the Phoenix ones, isn't it? There's the PD25 and PD. Where is it? Maybe it's just me. Randy, you've got PD stuck in the head. What's PD stand for? Police department? Perpendicular diameter? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, it's a nice light. Genuinely, it's a nice light. I like it a lot. Um, let's, stop record let's stop recording. Hi. I, oh, love to my voice then. I sounded like the puberty boy off uh, The Simpsons. Ha! Ah, hi! Ah, how are you? Oh. That was a good reminder. Turn your phone off, not bad. Oh, 